Hey everyone, Teo here. Today I'm going to review the Gaomon PD156 Pro Pen display. This review is going to be a bit long, so if you want to save time, just check out the text review that I have already written using the link in the video description below, or use the timestamps provided to jump to different sections of this video. First of all, disclaimer, this is a review unit from Gaomon, and having said that, let me give you the bottom line up front. This display is laminated and cursor tracking is quite accurate. I measured 100% sRGB color support, so color accuracy is quite good. It uses a matte screen protector and the uh, texture is nice to draw on. The downsides are the matte screen protector does introduce more green than what I like. So image quality is affected slightly, but it's not too bad. The maximum brightness is just 148 nits from what I have measured and I wish it could be higher but 148 is still sufficient for indoor use. And when it comes to connecting this pen display using an adapter to your computer instead of connecting this directly to your computer, sometimes there are connection issues. I'll talk more about the issues later in the video. Let me show you what's in the box. This looks like a really huge case. That's the pen display and a stand is included. And those are all the cables. These are the items included. This is a USB wall power adapter with country specific plugs pen and the stand, USB extension cable, this is a Y-shaped cable. At this end we have USB type A and full size HDMI, these two will go to your computer. And the other end is this USB type C which will go to the pen display. This is a stand, microfiber cleaning cloth, quick start guide and one artist glove is included. I find it interesting, they have included a case. This is PU leather and the interior is some felt like material. There are actually magnets here, but they are not that strong. This is the pattern of the PU leather. This is the pen and included stand. The pen feels a bit plasticky, but it's solid enough, has a nice width to it. It's not powered by battery, so no charging is required. It supports tilt sensitivity and slightly over 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. The two side buttons here have a firm click to them and this rubber grip is quite comfortable to hold. The pen tip has some movement to it. This is the pen stand. That's the nib remover at the bottom. There is no rubber at the bottom so this glides on the table quite easily. So you can open this up to find 8 replacement nibs. This is the stand included. This is made with metal and the back is plastic. So there is this latch here to hold the pen display. There are two metal support here and three positions here, so you get a total of six angles to deploy. This is probably around 45 degrees, so this is the tallest position. And this is the lowest. The stand feels quite sturdy. There are rubber pieces here and here to prevent scratching. And on the back, there are four rubber feet to prevent this from gliding on the table and it's quite firm and stable on the table. So this is the Gaomon PD156 Pro Pen Display. There are two stickers there to tell you to peel off this reflective protective film. So let's peel this off carefully. The sticker came off. Okay, I may have to use my fingernail to remove this. Okay, it works. Just peel off slightly to check that the surface is matte, textured, non-glossy and non-reflective. If it's glossy, please paste this back again and remove only this 
film because this is supposed to be matte textured and this is a matte textured screen protector design of this pen display looks good the build quality seems solid enough there are 10 physical shortcut buttons on the side here and there is this dial here with a button in the middle all the buttons and dials are customizable so the buttons they have a firm click to them this dial or wheel here is easy to turn this button here is for changing the functionality of the dial on the right side of the pen display we have this USB-C port for the cable these two buttons are for adjusting the brightness and this is the power button this pen display is quite thin as you can see this is as thick as my laptop even though this is quite thin this is not a tablet this is actually a monitor so you do have to connect this to a computer in order to use this this can be used with windows and mac os and because this is not a tablet it doesn't have a touch screen let's take a look at the connection that i have here so i'm using a macbook air with only usb-c ports and because the cable provided requires you to use full-size hdmi and usb type a i need to use this adapter in order to connect this to the pen display and the usb ports on this macbook air does not provide enough power to power the pen display so i had to connect an additional cable to the power source there is no direct USB-C to USB-C connections so you have to use the cables provided and yep um, cable clutter could be an issue anyway um, I'll try to push this all the way behind under the table this laptop with windows has full-size HDMI and USB type A but this cable is not long enough to reach both the ports as they are on opposite sides so even with the USB extension cable um, I am still not able to reach both the sides so I still have to use this USB-C adapter if you're using a desktop then you shouldn't have this problem by the way if your computer's USB-A port can provide enough power to power the pen display you may not need to use the extension cable to connect to an external power source I've just switched to a different wallpaper so that you can see easily whether there is any color shift when you view the pen display from different angles and there is minimal color shift this is the anti-glare of the matte screen protector if you don't have light source pointing directly at the display this is how it's going to look so this is a 15.6 inch pen display and the resolution supported is 1920 by 1080 there is going to be slight pixelation with 1080p resolution that's unavoidable with this resolution I also see some color noise introduced by the matte screen protector I'm not sure if you can see that 1080p resolution is still a very usable resolution you can have palettes on the left and right side and still have a good amount of canvas space to draw on and this 15.6 inch drawing area it's quite a comfortable area to work with color accuracy for this pen display is quite good the maximum brightness from what I've measured is 148 nits which is all right I wish it could be brighter but um, 148 nits is still suitable for indoor use image quality is affected by the matte screen protector because of the matte textured surface um, that actually introduces some color noise or grain to the visuals so I feel like the visuals could be sharper anyway that's the compromise uh, you get if you want to draw on a textured surface and this display does have a nice textured surface to draw on the display is laminated so there is no gap between the surface and the LCD beneath so there is no gap between the pen tip and the line that you draw cursor tracking is quite accurate right up to the extreme edge there may be some offset 
at the left and right edge about one two pixels but clicking on the wrong things is not going to be an issue with this pen display so to get into the OSD you have to press and hold this button for three seconds and use this four buttons to navigate and change the settings so you can change the brightness contrast uh, economy mode dynamic contrast ratio um, i'm not sure what is overdrive you can change the color temperature or you can set a custom color temperature and change the rgb and all these other settings are not that important let's see what you can do with the driver so on this page you can customize the 10 physical shortcut buttons and the dial for the dial you can customize up to three shortcuts so let's just uh, take a look at what you can do here so you can set specific keyboard shortcuts you can choose mouse uh, functions you can have it switch display or switch brush I'm using this with a laptop so I have one of the buttons here set to switch display so that I can move the cursor from one display to the other and back when needed you can also customize uh, media controls or launch applications so you can do this for all the 10 buttons and here on this page you can customize the pressure sensitivity there is only one control point to adjust the pressure curve though and the two side buttons on the pen can be changed or customized here for the work area you can just leave it as default if you are left handed you can set the rotation to 180 degrees so that the shortcut buttons are on the right side and if for some reason there is misalignment with the cursor and the pen tip or the cursor has some offset to the pen tip you can do your monitor calibration here and that's pretty much uh, all the things you can do with this driver oh if you want to create shortcut sets uh, for specific apps you use uh, you can add the apps here so for example you can create a set of shortcuts specific to adobe photoshop and another set of shortcuts specific to adobe illustrator or whatever apps that you use the Windows driver has more control over the pressure curve because there are two control points you can move. There is also this additional Windows Ink functionality which you may have to toggle on or off or troubleshooting when pressure is not working as expected. The Windows driver also has this radial functionality where you can use the wheel to rotate certain user interface. Um, it can be useful depending on the app you are using time for some line quality test initial activation force of this pen is very low which means you can draw thin lines very easily even if you have a thick brush selected so you can actually complete a single drawing without changing the brush size because you can just change the brush size by changing how much pressure you apply and the lines are able to taper very nicely very smoothly it seems like as long as the pen tip is touching the surface even if you don't apply any pressure you will be able to get a line let me draw some diagonal lines slowly to see if there is any jitter or wobble and from what i can see there is no jitter or wobble so this pen is quite accurate let's see if we can maintain consistent pressure to draw lines with consistent waves and it seems like i am able to maintain consistent waves or pressure quite easily this is the line transition from thin to thick this is line transition from thin to thick and the transition seems quite smooth you can draw dots easily by just tapping the 
pen on the surface and this also reacts to pressure tilt sensitivity works well so you can see how the cursor will follow the direction of the pen the overall drawing experience is quite good because the pen is quite sensitive the performance of the pen is very predictable very consistent there are no surprises and because the initial activation force is so low it's very easy to draw thin lines uh, very easily even if you have a thick brush selected and the curves they taper sorry the lines they taper really well the matte textured screen protector is nice to draw on but it's on the smoother side so it's going to take some time to get used to the lines are able to taper very smoothly which is really nice it's really easy to control the pressure so having such a sensitive pen is very convenient because you don't have to change the brush size manually you can just choose a big brush and still draw with thin lines this is how the pen sounds on the matte textured screen protector hatching seems fine hatching works all right almost done overall drawing experience is very positive i've tested the pen display on both Windows and Mac OS and with various drawing software Photoshop, Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, Krita, Midibank Paint Pro, Clip Studio and they all perform very well except for Adobe Illustrator on Mac OS where for some reason there is just no pressure sensitivity this is Clip Studio Paint performs really well and this was drawn with Midibank Paint Pro overall drawing performance is fantastic the pen has very low initial activation force it's a very sensitive pen and it's very accurate so my overall drawing experience is very positive I did not experience any glitches except with Adobe Illustrator on Mac OS where pressure doesn't work for some reason and now I want to talk about glitches and issues and the downsides of this pen display the matte screen protector has a nice texture to draw on but it does introduce more grain relatively speaking compared to other brands so it affects image quality slightly having said that the pen display still looks good the color still looks good the maximum brightness of 148 nits um, it's all right it's sufficient for indoor use currently i have this at maximum brightness and i have strong light source from the window there and the colors the brightness um, looks good enough but i do wish the brightness could be higher another issue is if you have to connect this pen display using an adapter to your computer um, from my experience uh, I had issues when connecting using an adapter to my MacBook Air when I restart the MacBook Air the pen display wasn't detected so I have to disconnect and connect sometimes it doesn't work I have to disconnect and connect again so uh, if possible try and connect this directly to your computer using the HDMI and the USB because when I tested this with direct connection to Windows computer and also with my Mac mini like using HDMI and USB without this um, it works fine I can restart and the display will be detected so there could be some issues when using this with an adapter 
The last issue is I wasn't able to get pressure sensitivity to work with Adobe Illustrator on Mac OS. The Windows version of Illustrator works fine with pressure. Alright, to conclude, the Gaumon PD156 Pro is a good looking pen display with solid build quality. Color accuracy is quite good, drawing performance is fantastic. The pen is very sensitive, has very low initial activation force. This pen performs like much better than I expected. There are no major glitches except with Adobe Illustrator or Mac OS where for some reason I wasn't able to get the pressure to work but other than that the other drawing apps they perform really well so my overall drawing experience with this pen display is very positive. Other than the downsides that I mentioned earlier, um, there are no significant deal breakers so this is a product I can recommend. If you guys are interested to buy this, check out some of the affiliate links that I have for you in the video description below. There are also some uh, promotion going on uh, for some discounts. Alright, thanks for watching this. I hope this review is helpful. See you guys in the next video. Bye.